today for the Women on a Mission with a Purpose Conference. Today we will be talking about the faith in one's life and also the importance of the spiritual conference for men and women. Our facilitators are Pastor Carol Logan of the Redeem, Blessed, and Love Ministries in Temple Hills, Maryland. Hello, how are you today? Blessed, thank you. We have Prophetess Trustee Cunningham of the Eternal Life and Christian Ministries in Waldorf, Maryland, and we also have Pastor Sharon Goodman of Power First Deliverance Ministries in Capitol Heights, Maryland. So, ladies, I first of all, I would like to say thank you for all. Thank you for everything. Um, your messages have been very uplifting, powerful, and it has really blown me away today. It's definitely something that has touched so, me. Heard so many d different powerful messages today from each of you, and how you all applied in your lives. So, what led you, women of God, to start this conference? Well, we originally uh, came about a year ago, where Prophetess um, Grace Feline was hosting a women's conference. And after that particular conference, uh, we felt the need to um, come together. And there was originally four of us, which is, there is four of us, and... Um, the Lord just put on our heart that um, we had a word for God's people. And we stepped out in faith and obeyed God. And we've been um, doing this for a year now. And we are excited about the new doors that God is opening. And we are excited about hearing his voice and obeying him. It fell on the day mm -hmm. that Elisha passed too soon. There was a great woman and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said to her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God, yeah. which passes by us continually. Mm -hmm. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. And let us set for him there are bread and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn and thither. Yeah. And it fell on a day, hallelujah, that he came thither and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Jehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite. Jesus. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care that it should be done for thee. Wouldst thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said that what is to be done for her. What is to be done for her? And Jehazi answered, Verily, she had no child. And her husband is old. Mm -hmm. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. Mm -hmm. And he said, About this season, according to the mm -hmm. time of life, mm -hmm. thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, yeah, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. Yeah. And the woman conceived, bear yeah. a son at that season that Elijah had said unto her, according to the time of my life. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you. You may be dealing with the spirit of barrenness. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Child that you're not able to conceive, but God may have given you a business, God may have given you a, 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 a ministry, God may have given you an outreach, whatever it is that God has given you to bring forth, uh, to bring forth. Uh, hallelujah! Receive the instructions of the word of God today, hallelujah! So we can break the spirit of parents. But the first spirit, hallelujah, the first leg. To deal with the spirit of barrenness is hospitality. 
traveling back and forth, ministering the word of God. And she said, you know what? Mm. I need to bless this man of God. He's going back and forth. You have to have the spirit of hospitality. Amen. 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 You cannot break the spirit of barrenness being selfish. Amen. You cannot break the spirit of barrenness talking about me and mine. relatively new. I'm the, the new kid on the block, so to speak. The uh, One of the originators, original members, um, could no longer fulfill their uh, their duties. So I, I'm, I'm relatively new to this, but I, I'm so honored and blessed to be a part of um, this mighty alliance of these powerful uh, women pastors and prophets that God is able to use us, not only in our individual ministries, but also how he's collectively brought us together to be able to be uh, a force, to be able to tear down all the strongholds of uh, the issues that women have. Not only that, but but men, because women need men. and we're, So I just thank God for how he's put us together to be able to be that extra force. So Our speak. theme today is, is breakthrough. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes it, the word has become uh, kind of popular in Christian circles. Uh -huh. and we keep saying breakthrough, breakthrough is yes. happening. Yeah. I'm feeling breakthrough. I'm breaking my breakthrough. Yeah. I'm going to break out. Yeah. And then nothing happened. Uh -huh. And it's just life as usual. And yes. And just regular. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for our great crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even when, when Pat, uh, Prophet Grace was talking about that, her believing God, fasting and praying, believing that God was going to heal yeah. her husband. And, and, and what do you do when you have faith Jesus. and you believe God? Yeah. And, God, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Yeah. And then things don't turn out the way you think it's supposed to turn out. Yeah. 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 Turn me to Isaiah chapter 54. Jesus. Jesus. Let me first read this in the New King James Version. Yeah. Verses uh, 1 through 3. That's all right. Sing, O barren, you who have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent, and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. We'll go on to verse 4. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. All right. Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. Yes. Hmm, hallelujah. And I'll stop there. And as I said before, that a lot of times when we're waiting for uh, our breakthrough, we're waiting for a new season to enter in, to spring forth, and it seems that, uh, as though everything opposite begins to come at us. Yeah. So what do you do while you're waiting for your breakthrough? Yeah. You've got to believe the word of the Lord. Yeah. You've got to be so tenacious and yeah. believe God. You said it, I believe it. Yeah. No matter how it turns out, yeah. it's as though you're steadfast in your faith, yeah. right, right, rooted and grounded in that word, but then also so flexible that no matter what he wants to do, right, that you're able yeah. to, to combine and to weave. So yeah. the public life throws punches at you. Yeah. Yeah. The devil tries to buffet you yeah. right, and tell that you're able to move, but I'm yeah. still standing. Yeah. Yeah. I believe for one outcome, but I know that God is still good. Yeah. I know that he is able. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. And if he doesn't, I'm still going to bless him. I'm still going to praise yeah. him. Yeah. I bless God. Hallelujah. That even a prophet's race was sharing that with her husband having cancer, and that even with, uh, she, she didn't say that, I apologize, that with, with him being sick, yes. and, and then uh, him uh, passing away, dying, yes. that I had cancer, yes. and I remember a, a bishop was telling me that it's not your time, 
And you know, when, when, you, when you have um, adverse things happening in your life, you know, it, it, it all the, the warming in your mind, and, and you thinking that this is it, but I got so much more living to do, God. And the special told me, he said that it's not your time because you're still here. Yes. Oh. And just like the woman of God shared earlier, that apparently was her husband's time. Yes. Because God can do anything that he wants. Yes. 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 So you're here for a reason. You're here for a purpose. Yes. Yes. And even as we're able to mourn and to grieve with our brothers and sisters, yes. your breakthrough is about yes. to happen. Yes. I want to encourage you this day that it's not over yet. No, yes. no matter what obstacle, no matter what giant you may be facing in your life, yes. it's not over yet. Yes. Yes. Your heart may be heavy, but it's not over yet. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. When you're on the brink, a breakthrough. Yeah. That kind of seems darkest. That's all right. Then. We hear you put words that yeah. may and June is yeah. a time to begin new things. Yeah. May and June is a time to type loose things. There's the start yeah. new initiatives and innovations and begin to move forward in your dreams mm -hmm. and visions. And then June feels like you're trudging through mud. Yeah. It feels like, my God, my feet are heavy. And I, I can't even pray the way that I used to. And it feels like God is shut up heaven. And, and I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to muddle through, but I still believe God's word. But why does it feel so hard? Come on. Dear ones, the enemy of your soul. Yeah. Oh, my God, comes to try to distract you. Yeah. Try to whisper in your ear that yeah. it's not going to happen. Uh -huh. When you're at the brink, literally, of that tiny little step over yeah. into the newness of life, yeah. your breakthrough season, your new season, he would tell you, it's not worth it. Jesus. Jesus. Everybody's going through. Praise the Lord. I, I just want to thank God for the women on a mission. We're all pastors and how we can come together uh, and work for the Lord together in unity. And I hope that this will be an encouragement to other pastors to come together and work in unity. That takes us home to Psalm 51, 7 through 10. Thank you, God. Where it says, Purge me with a hand, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your faith from the sin. It can't look on that. And blot out my iniquities. Then look down and say, Create in me. Yes, Lord. Randis Meyer, 
and you're watching Access to Heaven Network. Never honor God with your life. Come on now. 
As for this woman, yes. they give to honor God. Yes. Ooh. With your life. So how often are these conferences held? Um, we um, host them four times a year. And um, this year we had a late start, just like Prophetess uh, Tressie said, that one of our original uh, partners left. And so we were really seeking the Lord as to who the Lord wanted to be in alliance with us. And so when the Lord put it on our hearts and gave us the name of Prophetess Trusty, we went into much prayer. Um, this is something, this ministry is based on prayer and obedience unto God. This is not about us um, making a great name for ourselves, but lifting up the name of Jesus and ministering to the people of God so that God can be glorified. So what would you say the main objective is for each conference? And in what emotional ways do you want people to leave? What message do you want them to take from each conference? Well, like today, with our theme being breakthrough, uh, we, we want to leave people feeling empowered that uh, there's so many things and issues happening in the world. We, we all know it. And even if you're not a Christian, you still experience um, uh life. So we always want to uh, have a, a premise of our conferences of giving hope, uh, encouragement to building up our brothers and sisters that no matter where you are, that you can get a refreshing here, that you're able to move on. Also, I believe also to help challenge you to go to your next level. I believe in, in, in life that we're always, we're, we're always growing. We're not the same as we were when we were in 16 years old. And the same thing, we're not the same in our 20s. And that we're always growing and we should be getting better. Not just growing old and you know, uh, chronological years, but also uh, being better. And, and that's our, one of our missions is to always empower the people, make them feel like I can do this and then expand their mind. I can do that. I never thought about that, but yes, I am willing to take that chance and do whatever the Lord is wanting me to do. Also praise God that, that those that are, that, well, that are not saved, the unchurched, amen, that they can come together. They don't have to sit on the sideline and just look. They can come in and they can join in with us. It's about souls and it's about salvation that they be saved. What would you say is the importance of finding balance in your family, in your work life, in your faith? Well, um, praise the Lord. Balance is very important. How can you minister wholeness if your own personal life is helter skelter. So um, balance be a women that desire to implement the word of God in our own lives or to share it with others. And so um, me being a widower, um, I'm constantly praying for my children, covering them, and um, I'm able to do more than if I was married. But um, there still needs to be a balance. I still check on my adult children. I still pray for them. They still give me their concerns because I think it would be a terrible thing for me to be out here in ministry and praying for everybody else and my own is not being covered. For, for myself, I'm, uh, I'm married. It's a remarriage for both my husband and I. So we have children uh, collectively. And uh, so trying to be a, a pastor and a wife and a mother, and stepmother, and we also have grandchildren living with us. So we have a house full. And then there's so, so many other factors, uh, but there has to be balance. But first and foremost, that you love God. Yes. Because like I said, you're going to have valleys, you're going to have sickness, you're going to have things happen in your life. But when you're able to say, you know what, God's got me. I'm able to, to get through this. Another thing the Lord's been really showing me that, as I said, that this is my uh, a remarriage for my husband and I. We're going on 13 years. And um, that we are putting our relationship first. Yes. That we're not sacrificing and that we're want to step it up a whole nother notch. We have a good marriage, but I want it better. And after better, I want it better. Yes. That we continually uh, uh, stoke the, the fires of passion between us. That he's not only my friend, but also my, my lover, everything. And I want to be the very same thing for him. Because that's how God's glorified, by looking at uh, people are able to see healthy marriages, yes. happy marriages in Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And all my children are grown. Praise God. 
just grandchildren and my balance is the Lord. Amen. That he keeps me focused uh, that I may be able to uh, to continue with the church. Amen. So, Prophetess Cunningham, you made a remarkable um, speech about breakthrough. That really resonated with me. Um, I am a young woman, you know, on my journey in life. Um, so that really impacted me in the fact that, um, you know, I would definitely, I, I'm, 2013 is definitely my breakthrough year. I've owned it. I've put it into the universe. And, you know, um, hopefully it will definitely come back tenfold. But um, can you just elaborate a little bit more on how um, the importance of in your life, you know, how, what advice you would give to young people um, who are really on their journeys and, you know, are trying to really just make things happen? Well, uh, as, as David says in, in Psalm 37, that, once I was young, but now I'm old, and that's me. I was once young, but but now I'm I'm old, and uh, when even when, when I do women's ministries, I I want to reach, like my, my daughter, young single. Uh, all my daughters, as a matter of fact, are are single, and, and my sons, and so I, I want to be able to impress upon them some of the wisdom and knowledge that I've gone through. That experience isn't necessarily always the best teacher. You don't have to go through the hard knocks that I've been through, but if you're wise enough to hear it, you know what, okay, mommy went through that, okay, daddy did that, I don't need to go that, that particular route, and, and that's wisdom. But I would like to impart to uh, young people of who they are, who they are. When I think back over my life, the crazy things I did, silly decisions, getting married at 17, you know, and we end up hooking up with, with, with people, I say hooking up, you know, hooking up with, with 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 people that are not good for us. We make bad choices and then another bad choice over that, and then thing kind of snowballs until your life is totally out of control. But if I can, for you know, one woman, one young man, stop. And I believe that we are doing things because we don't know who we are, whether it's drug addiction, whether it's alcoholism, sleeping around, abortion. And and I don't mean to go off on it, but uh, there, there are some preachers that are talking about uh, anti-abortion. I do not condone abortion, but let's get to the root of the matter. Why women have abortion? Let's go back to, you don't know who you are. You thought he was the one. You thought, you know, he was going to need another knight in shining armor to make everything happy, right? Unprotected sex. But when you begin to know who you are, wait a minute, no. You're not husband material. You know, I'm not giving away my goods to you. And the same thing for a man. I'm I'm not going to be unprotected because I know who I am. Whether you call me names or say I'm this or say I'm that, that you're able to begin to know, you know what, I know who I am, and I will not settle. So you all are ladies or women of Christ. Um, I'm just, you know, I would like for you all to elaborate on um, your true definition of that. What does it mean to be a woman of Christ? To love God. And when you love God, he would show you how to love others. Amen. <laughs> right, sum it up. Hallelujah. Um, well, one of my, my favorite scriptures is um, John chapter, was it 14? I should know this, right? The name of our ministry, Eternal Life in Christ. And, and Jesus is saying that, um, that, Father, that they may know you, yes. that they may know you. And and that this is eternal life, to know you. And as a Christian, that's what it means to me. Not just head knowledge, but have an actual heartfelt experience with the living God. When you, when you experience him, it's just like this, this trying to describe love. How do you describe that? But when you have a, a, a experience with a living God, that he is there. He says, I am your heartbeat. I am your breath. I want to be everything to you. And then the Holy Spirit... Oh, being our best friend that is able to conform us and mold us into the image of God. Praise God. Just loving the Lord with my whole heart. Amen. That that That's one of the main things. Amen. Well, I would just definitely like to say thank you, ladies, for um, your inspiring messages, um, your convictions, your beliefs, and... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed, you know, to be here and to receive this message. Um, it's meant a lot to me, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Miranda. Are you ready for a breakthrough? Oh, I'm
blessed. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. So how was your experience today at the conference? Oh, my experience was highly favored Absolutely. among the women here. They were as one. They inspired us as one. Yes. They also talked and spoke the word as one yes. and showed us where we must go and promised us that God's promises will still be fulfilled. Absolutely. Thank you. My name is Minister Isles, Mary Isles. Okay. So what message did you take away from the conference today? Oh, my gosh, that our life don't belong to our own. Our life doesn't belong to ourselves that there is a powerful breakthrough that God is doing mm -hmm. and that uh, if we just stay focused on Him mm -hmm. and continue to eat off His Word, Absolutely. then the breakthrough will be easy. Sometimes the struggles are hard when we don't apply the Word, but mm -hmm. when we apply it, then we'll be like the widow with the... Um, with the little oil, and when it got the vessels, oh my gosh, what an overflow. So, <laughs> so I walk away with knowing that God's word, his word is just awesome. It is truly powerful, and I look forward to more of Women on a Mission with a Purpose. Amen. How are you doing today? What's your name? Betty Ann Sminger. And what was your experience like today at the conference? Um, it was life-changing. Absolutely. It was life-changing. They talked about breakthrough. And it felt like I had a breakup and then I broke through. Mm -hmm. So it was giving birth to something that's going to be amazing for my life. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing today? Fine, you. Good. How was your experience today at the conference? It was awesome. I didn't accept or expect anything less because I know these women, these four powerhouses, and I knew that I had an expectancy from God and he definitely delivered today. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. is on the move coming to your town interviewing the people that are putting God first.